the EI and ESG stuff, like in the inception of it was, like you said, I think it was, it was supposed to be for good, but I think they ended up using it in a different way where it's not supposed to be used. I'm not sure, but I do want to talk about bridge. So bridge stands for benchmarking race, inclusion, and diversity in global engagement. So basically what they want to do is th- basically this company or this group is basically trying to push DEI stuff into not just video games, not just into movies, but in our day-to-day lives. They basically, they want this to be an actual thing that everyone adheres to, right? And let's say if you're, if you say retard or the gamer word, you know, the Melanie Mac word, you know, like you cannot ever get hired in a way. You cannot say any, you have to say everything that's, you have to be politically correct for every single thing. Right, you're just pretty crazy. So, what is Bridge? Right, if you go down, you say, "What is Bridge?" Bridge stands for blah 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 blah. Bridge is is an institutional survey that explores diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility (DEIA) metrics, structures, and practices at organizational levels across U.S. registered organizations in the international development of humanitarian sector. So, basically, it's like they're basically pushing this thing stuff into even government, right? Which is pretty crazy. All right, let's continue. Why was it developed for many organizations in the U.S.? Attention to DEI increased exponentially for the murder of George Floyd. This happened in 2020, of course. And the massive racial uh, justice mobilization that followed in response of many organizations in the international development sector searched to find documented efforts that the sectoral level of the extent of the industry's DEI challenges. Uh, They found, however, was a startling gap in publicly available sector-wide data on diversity. So basically, they tried this before. Right. And so what bridge worked, but the thing is that since it didn't really work, they found that the people didn't really use it to what they wanted. So they made a bridge 2.0, which is right over here in June, 2023 social impact launched bridge 2.0 survey in the second round, two years after the initial benchmarking survey bridge 2.0 focused on two components. First, it gathered data on workforce compositions and DEI practices as it did in the first round. And second, it compiled experiences related to achieving DEI goals. Through these two components, Bridge 2.0 allowed us to explore trends in workforce diversity and DEI practices between 2021 and 2023, as well as enhance our understanding of what it is and not working, and we can adapt to improve the DEI practices based on evidence. Bridge 2 survey is closed. Now, basically, these are all the companies that um, the advisory councils and stuff like that. So if you see any of these companies, they're DEI and this is 1.0 and basically they, this is the results uh 84% organization were heads were white and that's why they're like oh we need to have more diversity up at the top right this this has to do with everything right leaderships were white board members were white chief of executives or BIPOC women so they, that's that's where a person like I used to work uh, I used to work with um who was like why aren't there any women in executive positions she's one of those people who pushes this kind of stuff without knowing what bridge was now uh, furthermore, uh, this is this is an article that I found. It says, can brands push beyond performative DEI initiatives? In the wake of International Women's Day, the World Pride Month, and the subsequent flood of rainbow flags empowering the talks and hashtags, do DEI policies risk becoming performative marketing exercises? The drum spoke with DEI uh, specialist uh, Cheryl Daija, the CEO and founder of Bridge, about the need for a narrative change as organizations eyes global expansions. So these are the people that basically push the pride flag on every company's social stuff. It's it's they're one of the reasons why. I'm not sure if they're the sole reasons why, but they're one of the reasons why. Now, um, now what is Bridge? Right? Let's go over here. Uh, this is this is their actual website, but the thing is this this is a rotunda, so it'll move around. So I'll bring up this one. Bridge is a purpose-driven community biased to action focused on the workplace, workforce, and marketplace. The bridge mission is to create cultural shift in companies where DEI principles flow through all facets of the organizations from the C-suite and marketing through product development, procurement, and customer service. So that's where it comes to like community management. You know, people who are people who are basically um, front facing for the companies uh, where to talk to people and stuff like that. It has they have to be a part of the DEI. They have to hire those people who are DEI with a variety of programs that Bridge offers, including proprietary research, storytelling, workshops, events and more. We identify, dismantle and rethink the structures in the place that currently contribute to the gap in belonging, representation, sorry, representation, inclusion, diversity and equity, which is what uh, Bridge stands for. Our long-term goal with the help of founding board members composed of DEI business leaders as to create a comprehensive bridge agenda 
that's the word, right? A keyword right? agenda and, and for companies and all subsequent certify against the implementation and measure impact. So basically these, these a lot of these companies don't have a big following is because they don't want to get caught. That's it. Yeah. They make, don't want to get sense. caught. Makes sense. Right? Yeah. So now if you actually go down to the uh, leaderships, there's a lot of them. So look, look over here, discover milk prep, you, uh, Condé Nast, weather company, Superset, Digital, uh, Direct Digital, Sephora, Havas, Extreme Reach, NBC Universal, uh, Nurturade, Channel Factory, Gallo. All of these companies are part of it. H and R Block, it's huge. Nielsen, uh, Group M, can, like everything. iHeart Media, everything is a part of this. Indeed, right? It's huge. Indeed is basically. Um, I'm not sure if you have Indeed over there in. Um, yeah, in job search. Right? Yeah, yes, yeah, or job search. Campbell's for chicken noodle soup is a part of DEI. Right, so so over here, so basically everything here, board members, directors, everyone, chair, vice chair, as you can tell, um, not a lot of white people, maybe maybe Davis, some of these people, um, yeah. but yeah, as you can tell, majority are female, BIPOC people, right? I look I look very mm -hmm. red according to the colors because of this color red over here, but yeah, it's um, it's pretty it's pretty nuts. Now, I do want to bring up a video that um the the cre uh the the CEO or the chair chairperson that created a uh, bridge. So um this this video is about thirty uh thirty minutes. We're only gonna uh, play about three to four minutes of it and let's see what she has to say. Okay. As part of my role, I was able to bring together right the 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 power of industry trade groups is bringing together the industry to create marketing platforms to create a marketplace of you know, buying and selling uh, media, et cetera. And so um, after the murder of George Floyd, I had the distinct pleasure and honor of being introduced to a number of chief diversity officers at that time. And we ended up, you know, it was a time, right? Like when everyone wanted to just kind of be together, mm -hmm. um, COVID was kind of happening. And so we would, we would meet um, every few weeks, we would just meet as a group. And um, it occurred to me in those conversations that being a chief diversity officer in corporate America is a lonely road. Uh, a lot of times, as you just said, right, if they were on the outside of business um, and they were told to fix things. And it wasn't really their job, right, to fix. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I thought to myself, well, how, why would we not use the power of an industry trade group to drive change against a purpose as opposed to just building platforms uh, for marketers. And so Bridge was born out of that. Um, and so, you know, as you said, we are now the first independent DEI trade group for the global marketing industry. So that's so, so that's one part I want to talk about. So basically mm -hmm. they're trying basically trying to infect every single thing with DEI. Right. And the thing is that what do the politicians say? Do not let a good tragedy go to waste. So whenever something happens, a mass shooting, someone dies, some some, some crazy catastrophe, these politicians and these co these these companies, these like like this private company will use this kind of motivation to drive their message. It's like, okay, you know, if you don't like guns, wait for a mass shooting to happen, and then and then um, let's talk about it. Like, and it's like, that's why guns are bad, right? So um, like for her, she used um, the death of George Floyd to uh, basically propel herself into it because the bridge 1.0 did not really work, right? Bridge 2.0 started working when George Floyd passed away. She started it in June, literally a month after his death, right? Using his death as a, a basically fixed point in time to push this bullshit and this narrative out. But I, I know I've been talking a lot, but how do you feel about this so far? Like, we're going to watch another three minutes of it. How, how, how do you feel about it so far? Yeah, it's it's not, look, it's like sweet baby on steroids on a much more global scale and much more relevant it, industries and governments. This is not just In my about opinion, this, this is worse than sweet baby. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this, the sad thing is they actually might get a shake of convincing a lot of people to make it happen, to let them start taking the reins in several key positions. Then sooner or later, all, all jobs are going to be, oh, you have to be Hispanic, you have to be Asian, you have to be whatever. That You, you can't be white. Whites are unemployable. Stuff like that. Which is, yeah, which is, I don't know.
pretty disgusting. Yep. And let, let's continue with what she had to say in the interview. Let's see what she has to say. I just wish I would have met you some years ago <laughs> to be a part of this. Um, Cause well, well, you know, as you were saying, you know, these, these chief diversity officers, you know, being brought in to fix things. I was told um, that my job was to make things look pretty cause I was in marketing. Um, and I was like, that's not what I do, but. No. <laughs> no. Um, and so I appreciate the fact that, you know, it is a trade association. It is, um, not just a marketing trade association, but that focus on diversity and inclusion. And so what makes that different than like the American Marketing Association or any other you know, association yeah. that's focused on, on marketing? Yeah, well, um, I mean, our North Star is really about inclusion. And so I should say that BRIDGE is an acronym for belonging, representation, inclusion, diversity, the G is the gap in all of those things, and then the E is equity. And our mission is really about moving the narrative of DE&I away from philosophy to operationalizing mm -hmm. inclusion as a business practice. So our North Star is that. Um, our North Star is not necessarily marketing per se, because we believe that inclusion needs to cross the entire organization, marketing included, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, everywhere from organizational practices all the way to advocacy. Uh, yeah. And so the way that we come at it um, is that we look at the business practices, you know, our goal is really about operationalizing inclusion, as I said, as a business practice, not a philosophy anymore. Yeah. And, you know, to your point, Sasha, what that does is it removes the dependency of DE&I from an individual personal function and it places it squarely on everyone in the organization, right? Um, and so I can talk a little bit about a framework that we've created, but I'll I'll let you, you know, maybe ask other questions and then we can get there. Uh, no, I mean, I would love to hear this framework because you are speaking my language, right? I have always been one that said this needs to be a part of the DNA of the organization. That's right. If something happened to the one person that's responsible, it should not make everything else fall apart. Um, and so one of the things that we're noticing right now is so many organizations are letting go or cutting back the resources or funds to their diversity and inclusion offices, their chief diversity officers, et cetera. And people are just like, okay, so if that's gone, what else do we do? And it's like, it is, it should be part of your DNA. It should be part of your, your everyday operations, regardless of um, which department you're a part of. And it goes beyond your employees. Like right. how yeah. Basically she continue goes and go going off, but yeah, basically like what she says, it's like, you don't want this. You want this to be a part of your everyday life. Everything that you, you that you should, you should be doing, you, everything that you should be remembering, your day-to-day -day job, it should be part of your, DEI should be part of your DNA. And of course, this is recent. This is three months ago. And of course, this video got fucking racial. But the thing is that this is a very small video. The thing is that this video needs to be like 100,000 to a million views with like 100,000 dislikes. The, the, the reason why they're not promoting it and shouting it from the fucking hilltops is because they don't they don't want people to know about this. Yeah. So the thing is that they basically came out and said, we want DEI to be in your DNA. Why are you cutting funds from your DEI offices? Right. Wasn't there a company that we talked about how they're like, push, they're not putting as much money into the DEI anymore. And the person was fired for it or some shit like that. It's crazy, man. And yeah, th 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 this is this. This is like we need to gut it, root and stem. Like it, yeah. This is this is way bigger than than sweet baby ink. This is way bigger than what what we what we've seen is because this goes this potentially can go into government and it already has. So, how how, how do you feel about like the bridge and uh and, and social impact and shit like that, man? It's it, it's pretty yeah. wild. Yeah. Actually, I'd want them to start with BlackRock and Vanguard board of directors. All the white guys there, let's see how they feel, so they can see what's happen what's happening with because what's happening with BlackRock, Vanguard, and all the other financial institutions. Like they only see the uh, investment and adv advisory because they don't feel it. They're so high at the ivory tower. So why not practice it in the board of directors? So all the white guys in Bla BlackRock get out let's exchange it for let's say uh 
let's let's say if there's an example, uh, a rank and file agent who doesn't really who doesn't really do it his, his or her job, Re- replace replace the board of director with that person to adhere to DEI and see what happens, like because the this will only stop if the funding stops. So the people on top have to feel they got to feel the implications of imposing the DEI. So DEI has to start with the board of directors, mm-hmm. right? So no, no, no more white people. White people are not allowed to be in board of directors anymore because like, yeah, it's, it's, it's their time now, right? It's, it doesn't matter. Merit doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter how well, if they earn the job or if they have the capabilities to steer an entire business forward. So yeah. Take out all the white guys in the board of directors and exchange them for DEI people. Exchange them for blacks, for trans, for whatever you want. Just take out all the white people. Let's see how they feel. Let's see if they will they will not push it back. So no more yeah. executive high cushion executive salary, no more golden parachutes. Exchange, get those white people out. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.